All right, Clint, are you about ready to get started? I'm ready. All right, welcome everybody. My name is Kylie. Thank you so much for joining us today for our first ever live earthing webinar. Last week, many of you pre-submitted questions about earthing. So today we have Clint here to get several of those answers or those questions answered. Before we do get started, we did want to bring it to your attention that there is a chat box below. So feel free to chat. And there's also a Q&A box where you can easily submit your questions as we go. So please feel free to use this space and our team will do our best to address your questions today or in our next webinar. So for starters, Clint, one of the biggest questions we get is, um, what exactly is earthing? Can you please give us to start a simple overview about what earthing is and how it works? Well, <clears throat> earthing is, the term earthing um, means really to go outdoor, stand barefoot on the earth, and you technically are earth. It's like driving a ground rod in the earth when you drive it in, it's called an earthing rod. So, but basically it's about uh, just standing barefoot on the earth. And the significant thing that happens when you are barefoot or when, when you're standing on the earth is the earth has a negative uh, energy, a negative charge, meaning so that when you, touch the earth, uh, you're grounded, and it's like grounding your electrical uh, system in your home or any appliance or any, any kind of uh, an electrical device. What you're doing is you're connecting it to the earth in order to maintain the negative surface charge of the earth on that piece of gear or uh, environment. But, but the main thing is we ground everything to the earth in the electrical world to prevent charge, to prevent fire, to prevent static electricity, to prevent noise, to prevent all kinds of chaos that goes on in the electrical world. So the main thing with the earthing is, earthing is, or grounding earthing is about standing barefoot on the earth in order to reduce and prevent inflammation. There's really no other reason. So, but you know, that's what it is. And um, the problem that, made earthing of significance is that in 1960 about then we invented polymers plastics and the first thing we did was put them on the soles of our shoes and then we created synthetic carpeting synthetic flooring throughout our homes and as time went on uh, we became totally insulated from the earth so we are no longer naturally grounded um, because before 1960 we were most of us were either barefoot or we were, were we're wearing a leather sole shoe, especially um, in the summer. You, you wouldn't find kids with shoes on. Um, but anyhow, that's a whole different world. But, but today, everybody lives insulated from the ground. You have to make an effort to go outdoors and find a place where you can sit or stand or walk uh, and, and be grounded. So, what happened as a result of that, and we didn't know this, but we've been doing the research on earthing and grounding for the last 20 years. And the thing that we found is that if you have pain or inflammation in your body, if you get grounded, it will rather quickly uh, dissipate. And so then as time went on and we began doing the research and we're able to tie it all together, then we saw that there was a huge connection between inflammation related health disorders and loss of ground because when we were ground people then we would see many things happen but but anyhow all of these uh the there's an exponential curve in the rise of you know like arthritis i could go on the cardiovascular disease fibromyalgia lupus ms uh, gastrointestinal disorders but there's about 85 named uh, modern health disorders that they call inflammation uh, related health disorders or stress related health disorders. And what the word stress means is something is stressing your immune su system sufficient that it can't maintain health. And so when we ground people, we see inflammation disappear quite quickly. We, over a period of time, we see the body return to normal and the list goes on and on. So earthing is really about one thing, uh, grounding yourself to prevent and um, to reduce and prevent inflammation and to get your life back. And so I'll uh, take it from there, Kylie. Okay. Perfect. I think that's a great start. Um, so our first question, we'll dive right in, is from Wafaya. 
She says, thank you for this film, Clint. I have been experiencing pain caused by inflammation from years of being a hairdresser standing on my feet. How long should I be outside barefoot or meditating in the grass? Okay. That's a good one. One of my favorites. Um, basically, <clears throat> she has pain. Um, and what I tell everybody, as long as if you have pain in your body, and this is something we learned in, you know, over the years, uh, Dr. Sinatra was instrumental in bringing this to the surface. But if you are experiencing any kind of pain, you are experiencing inflammation. And the only thing that earthing does is reduce inflammation or primarily reduces inflammation. So if you have pain in your body, then you need to go outdoors and put your feet on the earth or ground yourself in some way until it goes away. And then when the pain comes back, you need to ground yourself more, I mean, or again. So it's not a, you have to think like in nature. In, in nature, uh, well, here's an example, like the animals in nature that live in the wild, they don't have any of these modern health disorders, these modern inflammation related health disorders. They don't have cardiovascular disease. They don't have MS, lupus, uh, and you know the host of all of these other related health disorders. Um, but on the other hand, the animals who live indoors, they all manifest health disorders, health, uh, inflammation-related health disorders similar to their owners. So we know it's environment. And then we know that when we ground a person, the inflammation subsides. So th the message here is if you have any pain in your body, then you have inflammation and that's oxidation of healthy tissue. So you have to, in order to put the fire out, you have to ground yourself and create a negative, I mean, um, you know, the earth is negative and you stand barefoot on the earth, then your body's gonna become negative and you can't have charge in a negative, negatively charged object. So, but the point is, to answer your question very simply, go outdoors as often as you need. Uh, 15, 20 minutes will help significantly. Um, sometimes in the morning, uh, before you go to sleep at night, whatever, but you have to get this stress out of your body and sitting there cutting hair all day, you're, you're, you're charged with EMFs and all that, those kind of things. And you're charged with static electricity and you're touching other people who uh, have a lot of stress in their bodies and stuff. So it's really, really important uh, to, you know, wash your hands cold water. That's a good one. And other than that, just take a break every whenever you can and put your, take your shoes up, put your feet on the earth. And if you can't do anything more than just put your feet on the concrete, concrete is earth. Perfect. Um, so a couple follow-up questions. Um, Marilyn asked in regard to what you just answered, is it possible to overground yourself? Meaning if you're grounding all day and night, is there a point where it becomes too much? Well, um, all of the animals that live on the earth are grounded 24 seven. And what grounding does is it maintains the, the electrical stability of the immune system. And I need to elaborate on that for just a second. The, what causes inflammation is you have a pathogen or a damaged cell and the immune system sends a neutrophil over and the neutrophil will actually encapsulate that pathogen and it releases what they call reactive oxygen species and that rip the electrons from the structure of the pathogen or the damaged cell. And that's how the immune system destroys uh, these pathogens. But the key word here is reactive oxygen species because the word reactive means these are electrically charged molecules that have enough energy that they can rip an electron from something else. So <clears throat> uh, when you are grounded to the earth, your body is always negative. I mean, negative meaning it has an abundance of free electrons that can move rapidly and reduce charge. So if, a, if an immune system, if, it, if a neutrophil, neutrophil, for instance, does its normal thing, uh, like reduce a pathogen or a damage cell, then <clears throat> that's usually the end of it. In nature, that would be the end of it. But when we are short of free electrons or antioxidants to some people, then there's not enough to reduce any residual or any leftover radicals. So within three or four nanoseconds, they'll reach over and grab an electron from a healthy cell and damage it. And then if the damage is significant enough, then the immune system sends another neutrophil. And then we have a chain reaction and this is called oxidation, oxidative stress. And it is the underlying 
Um, it, it is what inflammation is. You're feeding it. You're creating a fire in the body. The body is now on fire. The body is now in flame, inflammation. So the point is that doesn't occur in nature. So, uh, and our bodies, you know, as we developed, as we evolved, our bodies were always negatively charged, except for our modern living environments. Uh, and, and so this is when the, the rise of these modern um, environmental, uh, what they call environmental related health disorders, like um, lupus, MS, fibromyalgia, and that host of uh, you know, it, it covers everything. So anyhow, the point is to answer the question, I hope is how long can, I mean, can I be grounded too much? It's right. impossible. It's impossible to be grounded too much. Uh, the more grounded that you can be, the better off you're going to be because every breath you take, uh, you're breathing in pathogens and particles and your immune system has to clean everything up. Your immune system is busy 24 seven protecting you and keeping you alive. So it has, it has so much to do. So you don't want to stress it by being ungrounded any more than you have to. Right. Okay, perfect. We'll move on to the next question. Um, and just a reminder, if you do have any questions at this point, feel free to enter them in the question and answer box. It's different than the chat. Um, so the next question was something that we received from several people, and this includes Candice, Julia, Deb, and Kathleen. The okay. question is, how do you get grounded when you do not have a backyard with grass? Or what about dog urine and pesticides? Okay. Um, well, first of all, if you don't have a backyard and you don't have grass, uh, you, sur you surely have a concrete sidewalks in the area and you have a park nearby. Uh, so the only thing you can do is, you know, you don't necessarily have to walk barefoot, but you can sit on a you know, on a curb or wherever, but you go to the park, take your shoes off and experience barefoot. Uh, this is a, it's, a, it's absurd that we even have to have this discussion, but we didn't know as time went on, we built these environments that have insulated us from the earth. We, we didn't know that this was the, you know, the ground that the earth itself was what maintained the, uh, the immune system electrically stable. So now we have to go about fixing this and correcting this. So if you don't have resources like this, the cold water pipe in your home is grounded um, and, and that's probably the best resource. So any of, any of the copper cold water pipes that are in your home are grounded. That's why just washing your hands in cold water makes you feel better. Uh, generally, uh, some showers are, that's why you feel better after taking a shower because the water is coming from pipes through the, from the earth through the pipes and so on. And, and so taking a cold shower is good or taking any kind of a shower is good. Um, taking a bath is good. All these things are good. Uh, but if you have autoimmune related health disorders or inflammation related health disorders and they're chronic and they're stressing your, your health and your life, then you need to consider um, some of these small ground planes that we've made up like the, these mats that you can sit on walk on, put it under your desk, put your hands on, put them in your bed, sleep on them, but ground yourself out, ground the stress out as often as you can. You, you just have to search for options and, and you have to get this stress out of your body, even if it's only 30 minutes a night walking barefoot on the sidewalk. And uh, the dog, if you, if, if, if you have a healthy immune system, you don't have to worry about dog urine and things like that. I grew up on a ranch and a farm. I mean, we were always covered to here with whatever because of you know the animals and cows and whatever but we were healthy as could be your immune system will take care of you uh, it's when you're it's when you have inflammation and you're and the body is fighting this inflammation that it, it itself is creating because of the oxidation process so the immune system is busy working on that and not busy taking care of your normal health that's why the health becomes compromised the immune system is compromised by the inflammation. So if you can put the fire of inflammation out, restore the immune system to its normal state, then it can fight off anything. I mean, the immune system is, I mean, is so profound that it's even hard to put into words. Um, but anyhow, I hope I answered the questions. Yeah, no, you definitely did. I think um, our next questions actually do relate more to the products though. So maybe you could just give a couple okay. minute explanation of why you created the products. Okay. Okay, the 
the reason we created the products is because one day I asked uh, myself, <laughs> I intuitively, I wonder if there's a consequence to humans no longer being naturally grounded. And that was only because I spent 30 years in the communication industry, which everything had to be grounded to the earth in order to maintain electrical stability, to, um, you know, to eliminate noise, to, you know, for, to eliminate EMI, all of these EMI, all these things. And um, so <clears throat> the, repeat the question, I'm sorry, Kyle, I I oh, no off. problem. I Just, got off on another thought. Right. The, uh, the reason you created the products. Oh, the reason I created the products. Okay. So, but I asked that question first. And so then I started doing these studies. Well, in order to do the studies, we had to create ways to ground ourselves and people to experiment and understand the effects that grounding has on the body, on physiology. And so we would start out, oftentimes we would use nothing more than the, uh, you know, the EKG type patches with round cords and put them in the palm of the hand. Uh, and then we would do our instrumental measurements, whether it's, you know, uh, various types. So anyhow, that's how kind of how the patch really came into existence. It was something we had in our environment. And then occasionally we one once we learned that it actually reduced pain to do that, then that became a product. So that was an accidental product. Then we, in order to, we realized that people couldn't ground themselves or anything, but we had to have ways for people to sit for a couple hours. And so we made mats that they could sit on. Um, uh, we, you know, then we made one in our, one of our first study where we uh, grounded people during sleep. We took a, a mat that was 12 inches wide by two feet long. Uh, it was a felt pad and then we bonded a conductive to it, connected it to an alligator clip, threw it out the window, and then we had people sleep on it so we could measure the effects of grounding overnight. Well, as soon as we did that, or as soon as we did the first study, then everybody in the study um, that was grounded, they wanted to keep the one they had and then they wanted more for their relatives. And then a lot of the researchers wanted them. So again, that was an accidental product. We had scraps left over, people wanted them, so we made them and give them. And then, so as time went on, we ended up with a family of three or four products. Uh, basically the patch, which is for acute injury. If you have any pain in your body, I don't care whether it's surgery, it doesn't matter what it is, put this patch on and the pain will yeah, immediately subside because your body's now negatively charged and that, uh, pain that comes with uh, like having a tooth infected or having surgery, that's oxidation because you don't have enough free electrons at the site of injury. So as soon as you put the body, you put the patch on, then your body becomes negatively charged. Then this pain disappears because you can't have oxidation when you're grounded. So, uh, <clears throat> so we have the patches, we have the, what we call this little universal mat that you can use it any way you want, standing, sitting, um, when you're watching TV or sleep on anything you want. And then we ended up making full size, we call them ground planes, but they're conductive bed mats and have people sleep on them. Um, and so we have the sleep mats, the universal mat, the patches, and we have a pillowcase now that's out now because it's convenient for a lot of people and it has profound effect. But anyhow, so it's really, these were all, accidental products, except for the pillowcase, that one we actually did design. But all the rest of them just evolved. We had no idea, and I certainly had no uh, wish or dream that, well, I'm gonna go out and sell a million bed pets, although we have. That was not our motivation. Our motivation was to understand what is the consequence of humans no longer being naturally grounded. Then once we really understood a little bit about the product, we knew that the most important thing to do is to ground people during sleep because that's when the body restores and, and recovers. Uh, and that's when the body heals. I mean, so it, that's the most important. So we focused on that. And then people who had, you know, they were a little more compromised like lupus MS and uh, fibromyalgia or whatever, uh, having the desk mats, the floor mats or something they could sit on when they're working or whatever their lifestyle situation was. 
But so anyhow, that's what the products are about. And that's how they came into existence. Uh, we are continuing to refine them. Uh, we have hundreds and hundreds of people, you know, making them and selling them and whatever around the world. And, uh, but a lot of these are, uh, I mean, we're still perfecting doing the research and perfecting them ourselves. We are just now coming in to the home stretch on providing products that are most of all effective. First of all, they have to be safe. Then they have to be effective, but most of all, they have to be affordable because if they're not affordable, then, and if they don't work, I mean, you're wasting people's money and time. And, and so it's really important. This is not just a simple, um, here's a product, buy it, and whatever. There's a lot more to it. We have a half a dozen people, uh, eight hours a day, answering phones and talking to people. And most of these are people that are not buying our products, but they're people who want to know about grounding, um, all these things. So it's a, this is more of a mission <laughs> than it is a business. But anyhow, so I hope I answered the question. No, you did. You did a great job. Um, so this next question is a popular product question. We received this from several people, including Donna, Sherry, and Linda. And they ask, can I unplug my grounding product when I'm not using it? Would it decrease the product's life if I leave it plugged in all the time? Okay. Um, no. I mean, you can, you're, you're connected to a, a ground rod in the earth via the electrical wire coming to the product. And um, it, there's, you're not using any voltage or any current or any, there's no, there's no electrical flow on it. There is just an equalization with the earth. And so it's, you don't need to ever unplug it. And it will probably last longer if you left it plugged in to come to think of it because less oxidation. So. And it's not raising your electric bill either. No, it has no effect whatsoever on your electric bill. Perfect. So let's hop on to the next question. Um, these are, it's going to be a few questions about the patches. So we have some patch related questions from Barbara, Michelle, and Anna. And they are asking, is there any additional benefit to using two patches instead of one? And does it matter where the patches are placed? Okay. It does matter where the patches are placed. I mean, again, I have to say this. When I'm speaking, I'm not speaking as a medical professional. I'm speaking as a, a, a 20 year veteran uh, in, of pioneering this earthing. And my comments are primarily from years and years and years of observations and experimentation. So <clears throat> with the patches, what I have found most of all, if you have arthritis flaring in your wrist, put the patch in the palm of your hand. If you have an elbow issue, a shoulder issue, or anything in this area of the body, put a patch on the hand. Same on the other hand, if the body, I mean, if you have a, an acute injury or a flaring injury, or a flaring uh, immune response, then you need to ground the hand closest to the site of, uh, of the flare or the injury. If you have something in the lower joints, knees, whatever, then put the patch on K1 on either foot. Now, for people who have just an acute injury or just had a tooth pull, or whatever, then just put a patch on the palm of your hand and it's going to, it's going to, you can go ahead and put it here if you want, but it's going to be more effective. We have learned if you put it on the hand. And the reason for this is the bottoms of the feet and the bottoms of the hand are the most conductive parts of your body. All the rest of your body has lots of skin resistance. So electrons don't just flow freely into the body. When you have charge in the body, when you have uh, positive charge inflammation, then they attract electrons and reduce and reduce their um, reactive state. But electrons, um, for some reason, they, through the meridians or through the normal channels that are in the body that electrons flow through, um, they're, they're keyed to the hands and to the feet. So that's what I have found now. To use, to use one patch, that's all you need most of the time for it. But if you have like COPD, you know, uh, chronic, uh, you know, or you, you know, your lungs are con constantly in a uh, state of inflammation. So put a patch here and put a patch here over the top of each lung. 
and that will calm the cytokine storm and quiet the, the, you know, the congestion and everything that's going on in your lung. And you can breathe in just a few minutes. So sometimes you need to, but this is something that it's a very personal thing. It's something that, uh, you can patch both hands. I mean, you can patch, but that's a little cumbersome sometimes. But during sleep, when people have chronic long term situations, they need to just put the patches right on where they're going to do the good and sleep with it. The wires are fine, they're all coil cords, they stretch and roll around, and, and so they won't cut off circulation or anything. So, um, did I answer that question, or do I need more? No, I think, I think that's sufficient. And, um, the second part of it is once the stickiness wears off, do the patches lose conductivity? And can I continue using the patch with tape? Uh, as long as the gel is on the patch, you know, the core gel in the center, uh, they're conductive. Um, if they lose their stickiness, what you're doing when you lose the stickiness, basically you're putting them on the skin and then it's absorbing, you know, the first layer of dead skin. And so, it, you know, you eventually you lose your adhesive. Uh, qualities. But uh, yeah, you can tape them on, you can do whatever, um, uh, just whatever works. But the main thing is have the gel. Uh, if it's just a little carbon thing, sometimes that might work. But uh, yeah, you just have to experiment. But some people use them for a long time. Some people put a new one on uh, one, you know, every day. Now, the only thing I will tell you about patches is if if you have if you're using them for an extended period of time, like you have severe arthritic conditions uh, and you're using them daily, you have to, uh, don't use the patch, don't leave the patch on for more than two or three days max. Uh, and then when you put them back on, put it in just a little different spot so you don't ever irritate the skin uh, where you get a, uh, an, uh, an allergic reaction to the, patch, to the adhesives. Perfect. So um, another question, or the next question is also kind of a question of preference. Um, Sherry asks, can you drape the sleep mat around your shoulders? Yeah, you can do anything. I mean, I can understand that question um, because when people are in a lot of uh, anxiety, irritability, pain, whatever it is, having more contact around you uh, is uh, beneficial like the throw or the sleep mat. Yes, it's not going to harm anything. It's, it's, it's something that your body is telling you to do that you need to do in order to resolve a problem that the body is dealing with. Right. So basically the products can be used however it helps you. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so moving on to the next question, this is a, another very common question we have. Um, does earthing keep me safe from 5G? Safe from 5, 5G. Um, that's, a, 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 that's a question that would take quite some time to answer, but safe, meaning that the concern, I mean, the, the, when we talk about 5G, we're talking about, you know, uh, you know energy, electric, uh, environmental noise in the environment. And... Um, it's like when you're grounded to the earth, then your body is protected from, you know, the low level uh, electric fields and so on when you get into the higher frames. But you know, I just have to say what I want to say about 5G in order to answer that question. And most people are concerned about 5G. And I think to a large degree, their concerns are misplaced because the people who are electrically sensitive or the people who are sensitive to uh, and uh, you know have what we call electrical sensitivities uh, that are sensitive to routers to all of these things you the 5g is not the problem the problem is that over the years we have lost our natural ground and our bodies are full of inflammation and the reason they're full of inflammation is because when you go into a, a fight or flight state or a chronically elevated sympathetic state. Uh, so when you, you know, first of all, anything in the environment, whether it's noise of any kind, sound, uh, feel, wind, cold, everything, 
your sympathetic nervous system responds to that. Then on the other hand, we have this fight or flight, so when there's a threat, then our cortisol skyrockets. And our parasympathetic, on the other hand, um, modulates that response and calms the sympathetic or the, para, or the fight or flight down just long enough that you can respond to it. The problem with our world today is we are, we are forever exposed to environmental stressors that are, are, that are um, you know, it's most, it can be, it's not just electric fields, it's noise, it's, it's, it's sound, it's um, static electricity on our fabrics. It's, it, it's, it's an endless amount of things of the environmental stressors. But what happens is every time you are, your sympathetic nervous system senses something, then the parasympathetic releases hormones to modulate that and to keep you level um, so that you don't over, so you have time to think it out and how to respond without making the wrong decision. So to give you an example, 99% of the people are not electrically sensitive and they should be if everybody, I mean, the amount of people who are. So the people who are electrically sensitive, what's happened is they're, they have been exposed to enough stress, environmental stress, mental, whatever, that their parasympathetic can no longer uh, perform. So it's, it, it's uh, we call it uh, exhausted, you've exhausted your adrenal, so it can no longer buffer or back off the sympathetic response. So the sympathetic response overdrives. And then the over, that or, uh, and that's because uh, of, a, of, a, of a chronic situation, but anyhow, so now the, the sympathetic overdrives and that uh, is called, gonna cause pain, it's gonna cause irritability, anxiety, and if it goes on, then it's gonna cause depression. But as this wheel keeps turning, because we've lost the functions of the adrenals, then we're more stressed, we're more sensitive. Now we can feel everything. Uh, we can feel the change in color on a TV set. We can, we, I mean, these people, they, they can feel everything going on in the environment. They can feel all the noise. Everything in our lives is electrical frequencies and waves and all of these things. But when you are, when your adrenals are healthy, then you don't, you don't experience this. So the problem here with all of these issues, uh, it has more to do, you need to, we need to put the emphasis on restoring the adrenals rather than worrying about all of these other environmental um, stressors. Granted, you do have to, if you are sensitive, you have to pay attention. So avoid things that you're sensitive to. Uh, with 5G, the safest thing in the world is shut your phone off during sleep, put it on airplane mode. And that'll, that'll stop that noise, that talking in, in the, you know, all night long in your environment, especially if you have it in your bedroom. So there's little things you can do, but, but the most important thing that you can do is work on restoring your adrenals, work on removing the stresses from your life that are causing you, that are, you know, uh, exhausting your your natural um, adrenal resources and hormone resources. I could go on for an hour on that, but I'll stop right there for now. Okay. <laughs> well, and grounding helps with your everyday optimal functioning. So yes. grounding is definitely helpful. So um, let's go on to the next question from Debbie. Debbie asked, does drinking alcohol inhibit the effectiveness of earthing? No, it won't inhibit the effectiveness of earthing, but it may give you a headache. And I mean, it may create a bunch of inflammation in your body and, um, uh, and do some, I mean, it's going to create inflammation and, and damage. That's what a headache is. That's what the hangover is. But I, I will tell you a simple little story. And one time I was down in Cabo San Lucas and I was quite young. And I think it was the first time I ever drank tequila. And so we were out there partying and really having a time of our life. We had a fire on the beach and we all ended up sleeping on the beach that night, but we were all drank more tequila than I thought anybody was to humanly drink of anything. So the next morning we woke up and like, we felt great. We thought, wow, this is, this is the best drink ever. So <laughs> I got home <laughs> when I got home, uh, I had a party a few weeks later with a bunch of friends and I said, Hey, you've got to try this because this tequila, you can drink it and you don't get a hangover. 
<laughs> and so we all had a good party and everything. But the next day, we all felt like we'd been, you know, almost given given up for dead because we had so much pain, so much inflammation. So, but I didn't never put that together with grounding until 30 years later when I started working with the grounding. But when you're grounded to the earth, when you're sleeping on the beach, uh, passed out. <laughs> you're totally grounded, but it prevents the inflammation. It reduces the inflammation that the alcohol is creating, but more importantly, it probably prevents a lot of the damage that otherwise would happen. And we know this from the athletic studies and so on. Right. So yes, and I think I answered that, I don't know. Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay. So um, we are gonna move on to a pet question. We received tons of questions about pets. So okay. um, Marilyn, Marveretta, Carol, Toby, and Sharon all had pre-submitted questions asking about the safety of using grounding products for pets um, and is lying on an earthing mat or a pad a benefit to an older arthritic dog who has a ton of hair? Okay, pets. I love that one because I like to go back to, first of all, and like I mentioned earlier, animals in the wild don't have cancer. They don't experience cancer. They don't have cardiovascular disease, lupus, MS, fibromyalgia, or any of these others, modern popular health disorders. Okay, but animals who live indoors with their owners, they develop diabetes, lupus, MS. I mean, they have all the same similar uh, inflammation related health disorders as their own and 50% of them die from cancer just like the owners. Okay, so it's most important, extremely important to ground your pets. Now, we know uh, from, again, this is observations. Uh, people put these universal mats on the floor. First thing they have to do is keep kicking the cat off of it so they can put their feet on it. Are the animals, all the animals automatically migrate to the uh, pads, you know, that are on the floor. Uh, a lot of them, 50% of all animals sleep with their owners. So when they get in the bed, if there's a sheet on the bed or a pad in the bed or whatever, the animals will all migrate to it. They all, they know, I mean, they, they, they're more aware of the effect that it's having on them. So yeah, it's very important. So the amount of hair, it doesn't matter. One thing about hair, you know that hair creates static electricity? I mean, I think most people do. But anyhow, the, um, uh, the hair has mineral in it and it has moisture in it. Now, you're not gonna be able to measure this so much with a standard voltmeter, uh, like so many people are, are doing. But <clears throat> if, you, if the animal lays down on the mat, then first of all, there's two things happening here. One, the earth has a, a resonant electric field so the earth is pulsing and it's resonating at frequencies. And so when you lay on or you connect, lay on something that is connected to the ground, then your body close couples with that. Meaning it's like if you had two, two drums and you start beating on one, the other one will start vibrating without hitting it. Uh, I don't know if people have seen this, but uh, so it's kind of here, the earth, as soon as you lay on that mat, then your body is gonna close couple and it's gonna start resonating with earth frequencies. So this is going to have a major effect on your hormone cascades and all of these things. And again, we know all of this from observations over all these years. And so the animal is going to, it's gonna calm the animal down. Now, the electrons that are, if, if the animal has pain, inflammation, if he has arthritis, that's, he's in severe, uh, uh, inflammation. So what happens when the dog lays on it, even if it doesn't have, you know, a hundred percent conductivity, if, you, if the body's full of inflammation and you're laying on a ground plane, then the, the, the positive charges in your body are going to pull those electrons. I mean, it's like two little magnets. If you take a negative magnet and a positive magnet, put them together and they go, boom, they snap together. Well, that's the same thing that happens. So it doesn't matter where those electrons are. If it has total resistance, that's not going to work. But if, it, if the animal is laying there with skin, tummy, um, paws, whatever, he's going to be grounded. Absolutely. Now, the way you're going to know that more than anything else is you're going to watch them and uh, look at their health change, look at their energy change, look at their, you know, their, their happiness. Um, but yeah, it's a big deal, very big deal, very important. Yeah. 
um, a lot of people in the chat are saying that their animals love to be grounded. <laughs> they yes. definitely show it. Yes. Um, so one follow-up question in regard to that um, answer is they're asking if you ever plan on offering pet beds or a mat for pet beds. Well, we have from time to time uh, experimentally and uh, some people love them, but the problem, there's a lot of problems with it. One is dog sizes. Some people want something very affordable. Some people need something, want something fancier. Um, and the bigger problem that I had in develop, tried to developing it as a product was that 50% of all dogs and cats sleep with their owners. And so they don't use dog beds. But then on the other hand, um, you know, uh, we can, if somebody said we really want them, then we can have, have some made and see what people want to do with them. Um, the little universal mat, that one is like 39 inches long, 12, 13 inches wide. You can take that one and cut it down to the size of the dog bed, just put it inside of an existing dog bed and it'll last forever, you know. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's a business there, there's a model there, but again, um, our business, earthing business, my business, uh, was to identify what are the biological effects of loss, a loss of ground. And after 20 years, almost 22 now, believe it or not, it's crazy, but we're finding, uh, we, we know the answers now. And so now it's, we do have to fix our shoes, we do have to fix our floor, and we do need, conductive carpeting, conductive material on the floor, conductive shoes, conductive beds, conductive bedding. And so what we have tried to do is, these are all things that are, would be value added to existing product lines. And we can't do that. I mean, we do enough to show everybody that this needs to be done, it has to be done, and we support anybody who wants to uh, investigate it. We are working with mattress companies, we are working with other people. Uh, to incorporate this in. It's not near as easy as it looks. And there's a lot of education. And But anyhow, so we are trying to help bring all of this about. It isn't our role to go out and be, you know, to replace Nike or to replace Adidas. Or it's our role to go out and educate them and teach them that it's really going to be beneficial to our kids if you put 10 cents worth of carbon in the soles of those shoes. Right. So actually, I'll just jump ahead here. Um, we did have a couple questions from people asking about um, how, to, how to be, are there any grounded shoes? Well, <clears throat> there are not. I mean, there are some people who have grounded them. People have come to us from time to time. And we've tried to work with them, but they all get really excited and they run off and do their own thing. And they want to do it under their own name. They want to do, they want to go out and get rich because they know everybody needs it. Well, most of all of them crater uh, because they don't understand that nobody out there understands that they need grounded shoes. So the job is still education. And that's what we primarily bring up, bring to the table is education. Anybody can steal our stuff and take all of our studies, take all of our work off of our sites and put it up and they're in the earthing business. But they're not. I mean, it's it's really, um, it's a major thing. But anyhow, shoes are one of the main things that I have been focused on for years. I bought a couple of containers of uh, grounded flip-flops uh, back 10 years ago uh, at the longevity conferences. They vanished like uh, pancakes on Sunday morning. <laughs> and uh, I, but everybody wanted, well, I, I want blings or I want this or I want different colors, different styles. And I said, excuse me, I'm not, this isn't what I can do. I can, but my goal was to show people that this is real. People want to be grounded. People want to buy grounded shoes. We sold like, like you know, 32,000 pairs in just a matter of a few weeks. And, but again, I, I didn't want to get back into it, but, but now that we're finishing up a lot of our studies, and we're finishing up the sleep products and bringing all the new lines on, then I have, I am working right now with two different uh, flip-flop manufacturers and I'm choosing the flip-flop for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, it's relatively easy to make conductive 
and we can have a price low enough that any person that wears shoes can afford one or can afford them. So I don't care about $100 shoes, $200 shoes, whatever. That's somebody else's world. But what can we do? We need to get things for the moms, the 30 to 55 year old moms who are taking care of their mom, taking care of their children. We need to get um, simple flip flops. So uh, people with ADD, what all these, these kids that are all stressed out and wired up, they need to either be spend, able to spend time barefoot or to uh, go outdoors and be, you know, get grounded, whatever. But the purpose of this, this, the one that we're trying to bring out, it's not that we want to be in the shoe business, is we want to educate, you know, 10 million people about grounding. So let's give them a flip flop that, that all they have to do is put one on one foot and go outdoors and they're going to feel the energy. They're going to notice the difference. It's easier to educate and teach people. So we are going to do that and we are going to do it in a big way sometime this fall. I uh, wish we could have done it this year, but it didn't work because of the situations going on in the world. But <clears throat> anyhow, we'll try to have those out late fall, early spring. And again, this is a trainer. This is something that we want to do whatever we can to get it out. But it is to show Nike and everybody else in the world that, hey, people, people want this. You've got to do this. And I, I remember working with Nike and all these big shoe companies. They all say the same thing. Hey, we don't care about grounding. We don't know anything about it, but, and, and we don't want having anything, anything to do with it, especially if it's something that is uh, affecting children's health because that's our market. Uh, so they said, as soon as everybody starts running into our stores and they want grounded Adidas, grounded Nikes, then we're going to make them. You bet we're going to be there, but we're not going to go out and create a market for you. I said, it's not for me. It's for the people. But anyhow, that's the world out there. Corporate America is not going to do anything except give you what you are asking for or what you are willing to walk in to those stores and buy. So until there's a, 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 a mass group of people who experience grounding or grounded footwear and say, I want fancy ones, I want better ones, then you can go running into Nike and get them and so on. And then the world will change, but you have to make that, I mean, we all do. We have to learn about this, uh, understand the effect that it has on ourselves our families, and most of our children, because we've got to do something about this situation that's going on with our children. Uh, Definitely. Their Thank yeah. you. Sorry. No, no, you're good. Um, so um, speaking of the effects of earthing, um, both Mary and Wendy asked if you could explain the tingling or buzzy feeling that uh, results when making a grounded connection. Is this normal and safe to continue if I'm feeling this way? Yes. Normally what happens, especially people who have been ungrounded for a long time, or even sometimes eight hours in a day, um, <clears throat> when you first get grounded, I mean, you're short of electrons. You're like a, like a little battery, like a, you know, a little, so you put the battery on the charger, the charge, it's going to be called a trickle charge. So, but anyhow, as soon as you put a patch on your body, especially if you put it on one foot, or if you put it or if you sit on something, whatever, the more area that's covered, then you don't feel it as much. But, but this energy that you're feeling is your body charging up. I mean, your body absorbing electrons from the earth and equalizing with the earth. Normally what happens is in 15, 20 minutes, that disappears because at that time, your, your blood viscosity, I mean, your blood has circulated 20, 30 times and your uh, blood viscosity is normalized. It's a lot of the inflammation is reduced. And I mean, you can still have pain because pain doesn't stop immediately. It has to heal and you know, the body has to heal. But this, this tingling that most people feel about disappears as soon as the body is equal with the earth. Now, if it doesn't, if it doesn't, then I would like to know, write me a note, send me a, send me a note. Okay. Um, so actually we have, several, um, we have a lot more pre-submitted questions, but we're going to take a live question. Um, this is from Murray and he's here with us today. Um, can you address the effect of earthing on the vagus nerve? Okay. The vagus nerve, the vagus nerve is, you know, it comes out of the brain stem and it goes, it controls your, it goes into everything. It's kind of connected to your fight or flight. So it's like when you are stressed, 
the vagal nerve will uh, contract your body. It'll contract your gastrointestinal system and kind of shut things down. And um, um, so that's one, one piece of it. The other piece of it, it has to do with heart rate variability, the balance of the parasympathetic, the sympathetic, and the thyroid and all these things. But anyhow, so uh, I guess the best way to explain it rather than get into the text of it is we did a study at uh, Hershey at the Children's Clinic in Hershey, Pennsylvania. It was done by uh, a bunch of researchers there and the uh, University of Pennsylvania. And what they did is they took 28 preemie babies. These babies were um, you know, six, eight weeks premature or more, I don't know. Uh, but the number one problem they have with uh, preemies is one, they've taken them away from their mother. So they're, they're out there all by themselves. So they're kind of in a stressed state, but <clears throat> they, they quickly developed the colics and all of those kind of issues. They're, they're, in, they're in a chronically elevated sympathetic state or fight or flight state. And so everything is stressed to the limit. So pneumonias, colics, all of those things. So what we found is they, they took a patch and just put the patch on the baby, grounded patch, grounded to the electrical ground in the hospital. And within 30 seconds, the vagal tone normalized and the heart rate variability increased 70%. So, so what this means is the, we eliminated the stress, you know, the grounded the body and reduced, it quieted the nervous system, which is the vagal tone, but it normalized the vagal tone. I mean, it stabilized the, uh, I'm not sure how to say this, <laughs> um, but it just stabilized the vagal tone, which normalized heart rate variability, which uh, norm, normal respiration, you know, manifest. But anyhow, the babies automatically, uh, I, I say return to normal. They say that, you know, it improved X, 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 and X. But uh, it's, the vagal tone is everything. So when you go outdoors, stand on the earth, it's going to put, if you have inflammation in your body, your, your vagal tone is going to be, you're going to be going to be in a fight or flight state and that's going to compress the vagal tone and that's going to stress the heart rate variability, tighten everything down. So ground it out and get stressed and your vagal tone will automatically restore. I hope I answered that right. Yeah. Um, the next question from Wendy, does earthing affect or speed up metabolism? Well, if you're, uh, if Yes, let me put it this way. When you are stressed, and a lot of people will eat food for comfort or whatever reason, but um, so, <clears throat> and when you're stressed, it's hard to go run or it's hard to go exercise or it's hard to do a lot of things, but you're kind of in a defensive state. So as soon as you ground the body, put the fire of inflammation out, <clears throat> then the vagal tone renormal, everything returns to more normal. And then <clears throat> with the immune system can, then can re go back to restoring the body rather than fighting all this inflammation. And now it's going to reorganize, regenerate everything. Your ATP is going to come up. Everything's going to come up. So then yes, grounding, um, grounding allows to increase your, I mean, automatically, you can increase your metabolism just by grounding, but because you're reducing. Now, what you do with that increase and how you increase it more depends on your food, your exercise, and all your other things. But metabolism uh, is, you, you want to normalize metabolism. If you get grounded, you're going to put out the fire of inflammation. That's going to normalize metabolism. Okay, perfect. Um, the next question, back to our pre-submitted questions, is from Annie. And Annie said, I wanted to let you know that both my husband and I have stopped snoring. When, when it does happen, it is very soft. Do you know how it stopped? And my blood pressure has, always, has also been lower a few times. Right. Well, it's just like we we're just saying that <clears throat> as soon as you get grounded and stay grounded or sleep grounded, that's going to reduce all the inflammation in your body. 
Now, people who snore, I don't know the technical names of all these muscles and stuff, but anyhow, when you, when you are snoring, what happens is you have inflammation and, and a weakening of the throat muscles, and so they don't perform properly. Um, <clears throat> and, but uh, sleep apnea, all of these things are related to inflammation. They are inflammation-related health disorders. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you get grounded, then it's gonna put out the fire of inflammation, and then those muscles are going to restore and then the snoring stops um, in the whole body. It's systemic. I mean, if it works there, it's working everywhere. Um, so the next portion of that question was? Um, well, she, it was more feedback. She was just saying that her blood pressure has also been lower. Yeah, blood pressure is something that we find a lot about. And we actually did a study. There's one on, on the Earth Institute. Um, but what happens with blood pressure is uh, blood pressure is to a degree, and you're just, it's the word pressure, you know, there's pressure, you know, putting on, you know, on the body. And the pressure is from uh, stress, it's from a, a fight or flight, or it's from, you know, something in your environment is, is stressing your body. And then the body has to, is tighter, so it has to, heart has to keep pumping, but the pressure goes up the blood pressure but as soon as you ground the body and you released all of, as soon as you ground instantly it's instantly it, you know that you have a release you can feel the tension just you can feel your body just you know take a sigh and just you know, there's a release of all the tension so that releases all the muscles and the blood vessels and everything else so then the blood vessels will you know normalize the blood viscosity normalizes and the blood's easier to get in and out of the capillaries. And it, it's just a host of things. But basically, you know, it's like our original hypothesis on grounding. It's, you, know, you know, that <clears throat> grounding, um, you know, normalizes all of the electrical melee of the body. And <clears throat> so by reducing inflammation and everything, then grounding, re you know, returns the body to normal. It returns all biological functions to normal because that's all the body knows to do and that's all the immune system knows to do is to return the body to normal and the body has there's a normal health is our most natural state if we're if we don't have health then something in our environment is interfering with our with with our immune system um, and when you remove that stressor uh, then and there's lots of them <laughs> But when you remove those, then, then the immune system can go back to work and do what it does. And in our case, not having a, enough electrons is causing so much, I mean, causing the, it's compromising the immune system so much. But as soon as you restore those electrons and get rid of the inflammation, then within days, especially, I mean, some people, it's just, I mean, it's like a miracle. But it's just nature. It's, there's no magic here. It's nature. Yeah. It's who we are. Yeah, I think. Um you know, a lot of questions say that, or in the, in the questions, they say that some people, you know, experience benefit right away and others, um, it takes some time. And yeah. so Becky had asked, how long does it take to see any improvement in an issue when I'm grounding? Okay, it depends on what the issue is and not knowing the issue, I'll, I'll spread it out a little bit. Um, <clears throat> what I have found is, you know, health would be right here. Uh, if your health is a little bit compromised, it's out here. But most people are kind of in this area day to day. You take a weekend off and you go out and play, you get a little better, whatever. But anyhow, the people whose health is compromised, closer to death than health. What we found is when we ground them, sometimes within days, sometimes within hours, days, and week, they will bounce right back to here. Um, so what is the difference between these people? It's the amount of time you're grounded, the way you are grounded, um, but if, if you only ground for an hour, or like some people just go out and put your foot on the earth for a couple of minutes and you're grounded and I'm okay now, that doesn't work that way. Your body needs to be grounded more than not, uh, if possible, but if any amount is better than none, but it's really important that you restore as much as possible. But <clears throat> so people who don't recover, as fast as other people. There's a couple, of, I mean, one is time and the way you're grounded, but the other one is what's feeding the inflammation, what's feeding the fire. 
I mean, we can put the earth out. I mean, earthing can put the fire out and maintain your body electrically stable, but there's something sometimes feeding this inflammation, feeding your fight or flight. It could be your environment. It could be what you're thinking. It could be your job. It could be a uh, hundred different things that I can't get into. But so <clears throat> try more grounding, first of all. And um, if it's like an arthritic flare or things like that, try to use the patches where they'll, they're more for acute. I can get that under control. Then it's easier to just sleep grounded and so on. But there's, you have to experiment. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So I think we're going to um, jump back into some live questions. Um, okay. This one is from Bonnie. Uh -huh. How does one effectively measure the value of the earthing products? The value of the earthing products. I'm, yeah, I'm assuming conductivity as well. Oh, conductivity. Um, well, for the last 20 years, you know, one, in order to make ground planes, we had to find ways to do that. And it was relatively easy when we had everybody in a controlled environment and we were managing the tests uh, in, in a, with some discipline. Uh, <clears throat> but when people, um, uh, well, when we started trying to come up with products for people uh, to use outside of our experiments, um, everybody wanted sheets. They wanted sheets to match the color of their curtains. They wanted Oprah's thousand count sheets and Martha Stewart's colored <laughs> sheets. <laughs> and so we didn't know what to do. And, and so we made a few up. And the only way we could do that is we had to use silver fibers at the time, silver. Um, in, you know, and we could only put about 5% of silver in the, and the rest of it was cotton and cotton poly blends. And um, <clears throat> so those worked, they worked really great for the first 90 days for some people, depending on their perspiration, um, the salts in their perspiration, if they sweat a lot, then the sheets wouldn't last as long. People who took care of them, washed them weekly or more, uh, they would last a lot longer. So <clears throat> we were always in a fight trying to get people something because they needed it. On the other hand, to get manufacturers and people to help us produce something that had longer life expectancies and so on. So anyhow, to answer this question, we have been working on this for 20 years. My objective was very simple. Uh, one, it has to be safe. Two, it has to work. And three, it has to be affordable. And uh, <clears throat> the reason, um, so that was my end. The more we worked with the silver, the more we worked with a lot of the things, the prices kept going up and so on. And, and they never did fix the conductivity issues and so on. So anyhow, we, some people, that's all they're going to want. That's all they're going to use. And we still have them and we'll have them available for as long as people want them. But for people who are challenged a little bit financially, whatever, then the, I mean, I remember working with the NIH and, and uh, California Health Services and talking to them in one day about everybody kind of said, okay, we understand what you're doing and we understand the benefits and we understand but the problem is when you go out and tell the public they have this problem you have to do two things you have to have a no cost solution and you have to have a low cost solution otherwise you're going to create more problems than you're going to solve and so our no cost solution is barefoot or just go outdoors spend as much time on the earth as possible so the low cost is one i've been challenged with anybody can make a thousand two thousand dollar bed pad anybody can come to your home and charge you a couple thousand dollars to do this or do that or whatever. But uh, the average person needs a rock solid product that they fits into their normal budget. And today those budgets are slimmer than ever. So, so anyhow, that's been my goal. So the, the carbon uh, mats that we now we, we sell, that's our primary product. Those products will last 10 times longer and they're the same price or less than the silver products. So we have migrated that direction um, and we are now going to, and we are still, we're still improving these things like the, the flip flops we have, they will be virgin rubber, pure rubber. They will have the proteins and the, the stress, I mean, the odor, you know, the things that are different and the VOCs removed. And then we add the carbon 
And so now you have a, a green recyclable shoe um, that has a very low carbon footprint. And, um, and that's what we have to do. We have to make a statement. This, everything we're doing is it's all about, hey, we accidentally disconnected from nature. Not only that, we screwed up our food, we screwed up our air, we screwed up everything. It's time, and, and, and my heart, and, and my, uh, you know, I'm with everybody today that's out there um, putting their hands up, saying, we've got to change, we've got to stop. And um, it's really important now. And but so our little con contribution is, let's get people grounded and get the stress out of their bodies so that they can restore their health. And I'm sorry if I got off the question. No, no, you're, you did good. Um, so I think uh, we're going to move on to the next question, and that is, um, they're, they're coming in quick, so I just lost it here. Um, sorry. Just scrolled all the way back up. Um, Basically, I don't, I don't have the name here, but the question was in, what the question was, do you need to have direct skin contact with the products or if you're wearing clothes, is that all right? Um, <clears throat> what happens is when we first started doing a lot of these grounding products, you know, our backgrounds are electrical, so contact is what you use in electrical. Um, <clears throat> but static electricity, and this is more of a static, electrical situation. Um, <clears throat> so what happens is if you have charge here, if you have a negative charge here and a positive charge here, and you don't have contact, then if there's vapor, you know, uh, humid enough humidity or enough perspiration to saturate uh, fabric, then these electrons are going to migrate and reduce charge they're going to jump. It's like static electricity. When you get close to a doorknob, it will jump from your finger to the doorknob. Lightning will jump from the earth to the clouds. So it depends on the charge and so on. But anyhow, to answer the question is, if you sit on a mat, it takes about three or four seconds for your perspiration to hydrate your jeans or whatever you're sitting on and make electrical contact with the mat. If you go to bed, our original mats that I did with those little two foot by one foot wide pads that we used in our original studies, we put those under the sheet and we had people lay on. And that's where we got all of those uh, results. And so today, rather than make the silver for contact, we decided those are only 5% conductive. So with the carbon, we're 100% conductive. So when you put that underneath the sheet, you're creating a huge ground plane. And, and it's negatively charged. So any positive charge in your body, it's going to, there's this other thing going on. Um, but the migraine, uh, the electrons are gonna migrate. You, you, as soon as you lay down on your sheet, your sheet's gonna hydrate. Even with your pajamas on your, your clothing is going to hydrate underneath the covers. And there's enough humidity in the air. Put all those things together and you have conductivity. Now, are you gonna run light bulbs with it? No, we're not talking about running light bulbs here. We're talking about reducing inflammation. So um, I hope I answered that right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next question is from Joe. Joe's also here live with us today. How does grounding help with depression or brain activity? And I thought maybe when you discuss this, you could talk a little bit more about the pillowcase. It seems like people are wanting to hear a little bit more about it. Okay. Well, first of all, brain inflammation is inflammation. The, that type of inflammation is no different than you know, a flaring arthritis here. I mean, Alzheimer's, all of these things, everything from autism to lupus, uh, they're all inflammation related. So what you want to do is ground out that inflammation. You need to get grounded, stay grounded as much as possible. Then if you have a lot of stresses in your life that are creating excess mental activity or mental stress, you need to figure out how to ground that out, but that's a different issue. Uh, but... <clears throat> But inflammation of the, so depression. Uh, again, you, when people go into a chronic fight or flight state or a chronically elevated sympathetic state, the, the body's being uh, loaded up with cortisol. The cortisol is giving you the energy so that you can run or fight and all these things. But <clears throat> if your sympathetic stays 
elevated and your body's full of, you've exhausted your adrenals and your body's full of cortisol, then you eventually you're going to experience pain and then comes the anxiety, the, you know, just the tension and the anxiety. And then there becomes the irritability. And because this is chronic, it often leads to depression. Depression oftentimes is related to a host of things. You know, it's like, you know, a death in the family or a loss of a job or a loss of a house, loss of, of any number of things. They put us into a fight or flight state. And um, that sets off the cortisol and, and sets up all of the anxiety, irritability, and, and, and uh, stress. And so we end up becoming very depressed because we're frozen in this uh, sympathetic state. And the only way you can get out, it's like I tell a lot of people, you know, it's depression. And, and Muriel Hemingway works with us a lot, and that's her, that's her specialty. And <clears throat> if you take somebody, especially children, <laughs> but anybody, who is stressed, whatever, go outdoors, sit barefoot on the earth, put your hands on it, and have a little bit of sunshine, because that's another thing. We have all these roofs over our heads today, so we don't get the sunshine either. Um, <clears throat> but just go out there, no matter how angry you are, no matter how upset you are, no matter what is wrong in your life, if you will go out and sit in the woods or in the backyard or someplace so you can surround yourself with a little bit of nature and just stay there, this will all melt away. As the inflammation melts away, you can breathe, your, your blood viscosity comes up, your, your the skin capillaries become more oxygenated, the, your respiration changes, uh, your demeanor changes, and all of a sudden, you accidentally get happy. <laughs> you don't have to think about it. It just happens, Nat not accidentally, just naturally. You naturally get happy. So... Depression is a very, very big thing to deal with, and it's very, very important to reconnect with nature. I can't say that loud enough. Uh, there's a lot more to it, and I can't speak about it uh, individually, but um, generally I can say that based on Muriel's work, based on our work, and based on all of our observations and experience, the best thing to do is just get outdoors, get out of this environment that we live in that is, that is crushing us, and back into nature and breathe breathe. Um, this, this next question is a live question, but it was also in the pre-submitted questions many times. Um, Fran asked, this might be a silly question, but if you sleep on a mat and there's a lightning storm, is it, is that dangerous to leave it plugged in? Well, lightning by and large is looking for the shortest path to ground. That is normally a tower. Uh, an aerial line, like cable lines, telephone lines, power lines, uh, or a tree. That's where 99% of the lightning is going to go. People who are hit by lightning are generally golfers. The number one place where people are hit by lightning is Florida. And they're out in the open on the golf courses. They are the highest object uh, in the environment, yeah, oftentimes. times. And, uh, and they have a metal rod in their hands, so it's kind of like a lightning rod. Um, but anyhow, in the, in, the, in the average year, I think there's three or 400 people hit by lightning. Uh, there's probably 50, 60 of them die. Um, and that's, and I say this, and, but lightning is massive, it's unpredictable, and you can't make a claim one way or the other. But observationally speaking, like people who, a lot of people who get hit by lightning, they're, you know, oftentimes barefoot or they're saturated in rain and whatever. So their bodies are conducted. So you have what you call a flashover. So the lightning flashes over the top and, and, and because it wants to get to earth. It doesn't want to get to you. It wants to get to earth. And uh, oftentimes I remember like in the communications industry, sometimes we would have uh, incidents or accidents where people would, accidentally touch a power line when they were building out systems. And what we found was that, uh, or a truck would become energized, whatever. But anyhow, so people would touch something that's highly energized, and then you would find a little hole in the, in the rubber sole shoe. 
so what it is, the shoes inhibit, the, you know, they are a resistor kind of. And so the lightning has to burn a hole in it and that's usually what kills the body. But anyhow, so if, but it don't take anything lightly with lightning. So, but if you're concerned about lightning, if you live in Florida, if, you're, if you live on a mountaintop, uh, then I would suggest that if you're concerned, unplug your bed pad during lightning storms. But generally speaking, um, <clears throat> The, the, the lightning is not going to come and hit the bed pad and go through a resistor and try to get to ground. It's going to find plumbing, it's going to find electrical wiring, it's going to find something that is very conductive because all of our products are resistive. Um, so, but again, I'm not going to say uh, anything other than if you feel you need to disconnect, disconnect, but uh, we've never had an issue. And the phys the, in, in, normally the resistors that we have in line, they would melt within a thousandth of a second before the lightning could even get to you, but it would evaporate. So, but anyhow, there, I can get technical about it. I don't want to. The main thing is if you're concerned, unplug it. But generally speaking, we have at least a million of these out there and we don't, and people don't unplug. I mean, they, they don't know when it's going to lightning. Uh, but you do in Florida and you do in the mountaintops. You can see them and you can feel them. So I, 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 go, go to NOAA, you look, look you know, North American uh, atmospheric and, uh, and, and, and look up lightning and, and what are the precautions? What do you do? Don't stand under a tree when you're, you know, and so on and so on. But there's a list of things that you need to know about with lightning. Um, okay. Um, another question that came through the chat that we also have in our um, pre-submitted questions is people asking if the grounding products can be used with surge protectors or extension cords. Uh, no problem with the surge protector. No problem with an extension cord as long as it is a three-prong grounded cord. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and then let's take another question live here. Um, from Julia Taylor. If a hairdresser has a pad on the client chair, could she be grounded while touching the client's hair? Yes. Uh, we've actually uh, performed a couple of studies at the uh, Chopra Center uh, over here in Carlsbad. And we were working primarily with body workers. And the reason we chose that group is because there's a large amount of body workers. They go to school for quite a while. And then two or three years afterwards, a lot of them burn out because of the inflammation in their hands and their bodies. So a client comes in, and whether it's a hair client or a, a body work client, they come in, they're full of stress and anxiety. And so a body worker, as soon as they go to work on them, then they, if they're healthy, they're gonna give up their electrons. They're gonna ground the patient. So the patient is going to steal their electrons and that's what's causing a lot of this inflammation. So what we did there in the studies is we put ground, grounding mats on the bodywork tables and then put the normal sheet over the top. The client really wasn't aware, it didn't matter. So <clears throat> when the client laid down, they were automatically grounded out. Their inflammation pain <laughs> reduced and that was all good. But the body worker wanted to claim for that, so that was a fine. But the main point of it was, as soon as that person is grounded out, then the body worker or the hairdresser can touch that person and they're, they're grounded, but they're not going to be um, charged with the client's inflammation. Okay. Absolutely essential for <laughs> anybody working, anybody that's touching people. Yeah, definitely. A lot of body workers use yes. the grounding products and experience yes. great results. Yeah. Um, so Bernard Kane is saying that after three months of grounding at his computer while watching TV and using a half sheet, um, his grounded improvements seem to stop. Uh, why, why would that happen? Well, you need to test the silver and then sleep mat, sleep pad. Um, that's where I would start. Um, a lot of people, well, you know, if the same problems came back that you originally had, that means your products are not working. Um, and they do get war worn out because they are fabrics and they are materials. So they do get abuse and so on. But <clears throat> need to check the products and make sure they're working first of all. Um, other than that, um, sometimes people find 
uh, newfound health, newfound energy, and they go out and maybe don't realize how long it takes to heal, <laughs> or they start doing things that they weren't doing, they create inflammation and so on. Uh, you know, it's like workouts create inflammation, exercise, all the athletic situations. Um, so there's any number of things. I can be more specific if, if he wanted to drop us a line. And then we'd give him a list to go through and try to find out what the situation is. But I'm guessing it's the silver sheet. Right. Okay, we're going to take a couple more live questions here. Um, this one is from Justin. Hi, Clint. Can you talk a little bit about exactly how inline resistor strength affects functionality of a grounding mat or wrist strap? Okay, it's really simple. Um, a resistor, if you, and the best metaphor for it is to, you have a hose outside your house and you have it connected to a faucet. And if you turn the faucet all the way on, the water's going to shoot 30, 40 feet into the air, or anyhow, it'll shoot way out into the air. So when you put a resistor, let's say you're just trying to fill up a bucket, turn the hose on, you're going to fill the bucket up in, you know, two or three minutes. So you turn the resistor, or turn the faucet down, so all of a sudden the water starts slowing down. And so that's called resistance. That's what a resistor does. It resists the flow of electrons, the movement of electrons. So <clears throat> you can drop it all the way down. I mean, you know, a live, I mean, a heavy stream of water may, you know, do some damage to, especially to the cat or dog or, or, or your friend. Um, but a little trickle coming out of the hose isn't going to hurt, hurt anybody. So what we're doing is we're trying to reduce charge, any potential for electrical an electrical event, reduce it down so any electron movement is so slow that it can do no damage. So <clears throat> the point of that is put the hose in the bucket. It doesn't matter whether you're letting it drip or whether you're <laughs> turning the, the faucet on full. The difference between the time it takes to fill the bucket up with, with a wide open versus, you know, significantly reduced is uh, some number of seconds. But in the body, it's like 20, you know, 100K resistors what we use in all of our uh, grounding cords. And it will take, um, on the average, 20, 30 nanoseconds longer. That's not a full second, nanoseconds to reach earth potential to equalize with the earth versus no resistor. Um, so if you start increasing your resistance, like you go to 200K, 500K, or mega ohm, or five mega ohm, 10 mega ohm, you are still eventually going to get grounded, but it takes longer. And then the movement, the, the reason the resistor comes into play has little to do with inflammation, because if you ground yourself to the earth, the resistor is going to allow enough electrons to flow and eventually reduce the charge in your body. Um, the resistor has more to do with when you have all of these environmental noise in your, in your environment. I'm talking about things that perturb electrons. Uh, like electric fields, electromagnetic interference, um, static, you know, whatever, whatever. But you know, all of these things, uh, there's, there's thousands of these uh, energies, radio, TV, police. I mean, it's airline, it's endless amounts of, if, if you could see all the, these, the energy, communications energy in your environment and you're looking in the room, you wouldn't be able to see the wall because everything would be black. That's how, that's how pervasive they are. Um, <clears throat> and the sun is, you know, all of it's, it's all related. So, but by putting a one mag resistor in there, you're slowing static charges down to the point that they will take, you know, a second or two seconds longer. And the reason that the ESD industry or some of the communications industries, uh, computer industry, use these high resistances because they need to slow it down so much that a little spark can't just, you know, they can't touch a motherboard or any kind of a chip or any kind of software and destroy it. So what we're doing is trying to find that balance that uh, 
one, we have to have safety. Uh, the reason we have to have safety is because people go out and do weird things with old lamps in their houses. They miswire things, their little appliances and so on. But it's just, and then static charges, we want to reduce it enough because when you walk across the carpet and you go touch your ground mattress, sometimes you'll get a spark. That's because you've built up all this charge walking to the, but by reducing it just a little bit, it eliminates that spark. So there's a dozen reasons why we use a 100K resistor that I don't know if I'm going to right now, but, um, but did I, I hope I explained that properly. If I didn't, then please re-ask anything on that question that you want to have answered. Yeah, definitely. If there's any other questions you have, we, our team is getting through them as fast as they can. Um, we have a few people that are going through. Um, if you guys end up having any burning question, you can always email us. I'll give you the email at the end. We'll just go ahead and take one last question, Clint. I think it'll be a good question to wrap up with. I just um, get warmed up. <laughs> <laughs> um, this one is from Bill. Bill is asking, are the benefits of earthing at all cumulative or do the benefits turn on and turn off immediately when earthing and not earthing? Okay, that's a really great question. I'm glad that, that was asked. If you have been um, smoking cigarettes for five years, I mean, you've done a lot of damage and <clears throat> uh, that's been maybe not a good one, but something, you know, something, if you have any kind of a chronic ongoing health disorder, then your body has been challenged for an extremely long period of time and you have lots of inflammation. So as soon as you, the first time you ground, for any period of time, let's say a half hour, um, you can disconnect and you can probably go 15, 20 minutes and, or even an hour. Sometimes I've seen people go days, but before the pain starts to come back up. So then the next time you ground, you can go a little bit longer. And the next time you ground, you can go a little bit longer. So there is a cumulative effect, but I, I have to say this, like if you have, uh, look, we work a, with a lot of ladies who have lupus and MS and these kind of serious uh, situations. And <clears throat> what we found, especially with MS, we can ground a, a person with MS and instantly it'll shut down the inflammatory response, which is the neutrophils uh, eating up the myelin sheath. And at that point, there is no what, the, what you would call MS, what you have now is you have the damage that's left over from the MS. So now, the, <clears throat> as soon as she gets ungrounded, let's say an hour, half hour, hour later, and then she goes back to doing, she's gonna feel better. Circulation's gonna be better, everything's gonna be better. But a half hour, two hours later, all of a sudden it's gonna start coming back. And it'll come back to the same way. But then the longer that you ground, the better that effect. But what we found with people whose health is significantly compromised, that sleeping grounded is extremely beneficial. Patches are absolutely essential in many, many cases because you have hard contact. Um, <clears throat> but what we found with MS is sometimes that sleep grounded all night, like 10, 11 o'clock, all of a sudden they started to feel the MS start to re return. So then we started grounding these ladies, rather than just eight hours, we'd ground them an extra four or five hours, six hours a day. And then they would get even better results. And then we eventually had to take them to 16 hours a day. Then they had tremendous results and they recovered 10 times faster. So yes, there is a cumulative of effect to grounding, but if you have chronic, uh, your health is significantly compromised with inflammation, then you have to stay grounded as much, about, much as possible because each time you come ungrounded, then the inflammation starts to come back, but it's the other inflammation. But you know, you're, it takes time for the body to restore and repair all that damage, all that oxidative damage that's been done over the years. It's like, you know, we see, we see things that is just unbelievable. We see cartilage come back. We see, you know, respiratory, I mean, you know, it takes a few years, but uh, complete return of respiration. Uh, all of these things, um, but it is cumulative. So, but if you have pain, especially if your health is very compromised, if you have pain, patch. 
ground, get grounded, stay grounded until the pain goes away. And as soon as the pain comes back, then get grounded again. Because the pain is the body's way of telling you, hey, my body's on fire, I have inflammation, you've got to get me out of this mess so I can heal and return to normal. Right, perfect. Well, I think that's it for um, the questions that we can take today. Um, thank you all so much for joining us and for submitting your questions, um, especially those that pre-submitted their questions. If you do have that burning question that we have not yet addressed, please feel free to send it over to our customer service team at help, H-E-L-P, at earthing.com, and they'll be happy to help, or we'll be adding it to our list for the next webinar that we host. Right. Thank you so much. Namaste. Thank you, Clint. Thank you.